Over the past decade, I've had the privilege and the challenge of interviewing hundreds of candidates for roles ranging from entry-level ones all the way up to high-stakes director-level ones. And I've seen it all, the good, the bad, and the downright disastrous. And that's why in this video, I'm going to share all of my insider strategies that are going to help you stand out, impress, and ultimately get that job. Make sure you watch until the end because I'll be covering everything. From your pre-interview preparation to that crucial post-interview follow-up email you're stressing about when to send. So let's dive right in, starting with the first key factor that's going to determine your success, which is your preparation. Interviews can be incredibly stressful, especially when you actually want the role. And if you just go in there and raw dog the interview without any prep, it's going to be a disaster. And the only way to take the edge off as much as possible is to prepare to the point where you're not just ready, but you're confident. And when I say preparation, I don't mean being able to regurgitate your resume to the interviewee. They could probably likely do that on their own. And if they can't, then you probably don't want to work there anyway. What I truly mean by this is being able to anticipate specific job-related questions and understanding the company culture and being able to rehearse your responses to the point where they just feel natural and powerful. The more prepared you are, the more poised and in control you'll feel in that interview. One of the most effective ways to prepare is by asking yourself the tough questions. Start by thinking like the interviewer. What would they want to know about you? What are your strengths and how do they align with the job requirements? That's what they really want to know when they ask you to tell them about yourself, not where you grew up and how much you love watching reruns of Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. You're essentially selling yourself as the solution to their problems. And in order to do that effectively, you need to understand who you're pitching to. I tried to research the company's core business information. What do they specialize in? How big is their team? Are they a public or private entity? Knowing these details, although I know they might sound like little details, they just help in refining your responses just that much more. It just shows that you've taken initiative to understand what the company actually is all about. Another great way to do this is just to dig into their mission statement. What do they stand for and how do your values align with theirs? I also see if I could find recent news articles or press releases or simply just go on their social media and see what their latest newest developments are. That could also help you ask insightful questions at the end of the interview because you are showing that you're not just interested in that role, but you are also invested in that company as a whole. And that type of preparation and enthusiasm can make all of the difference when it comes to choosing who you're going to go with. Next is to simulate the interview environment with mock interviews. This step is crucial because it helps you practice your responses and get comfortable with the flow of the conversation. You can do this on your own simply by recording yourself answering common interview questions. Why do you wanna work for this company? What attracted you to this position? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Can you describe a time when you faced a challenge at work and how you handled it? Where do you see yourself in five years? Play back that recording and pay attention to your tone, body language, and clarity. Do you sound confident? Are you concise and to the point? If something feels off, revise and try it again until you get it right. The key here is just to be brutally honest with yourself. If you were in their shoes, would you hire you? If that answer isn't a resounding yes, identify why and begin to work on that. And if possible, see if you can find a friend or a mentor to step in and act as the interviewer. This adds a layer of unpredictability since they may throw in questions that you weren't anticipating, mimicking a real life pressure situation. Hopefully you have some brutally honest friends so they can just tell it like it is and that'll provide invaluable feedback when fine tuning your responses. The goal of this is not to script your responses word for word because that just comes off as rehearsed and inauthentic. Instead, you just want to be able to internalize those key points naturally because the chances of the interviewer asking those exact same questions are slim to none, but they may ask variations of those questions and you'll be able to answer those questions with those key points in mind. Also make sure your resume is updated and just meticulously proofread for grammar errors and misspellings. The interview process can often be super lengthy and your experience may have evolved from the time that you submitted your application initially to the point of your interview. And again, small things, but just having that updated resume shows that you were serious, that you are acknowledging that they might not have the most updated information and you are here to provide that for them. Which is why I say always bring a few printed copies of your resume and don't just assume that the person has one. We might, we usually do, but if it's a really busy day, we might not. All right, so at this stage, you've prepared as much as you could, you got a good night's sleep, and it's interview day. 
When it comes to attire, aim to align your dress style with that company culture. You can usually gauge a company's dress code just by going on their website or their social media or asking the recruiter in advance. If you truly don't know, I always say ear on the side of caution and dress more formally. Just show that you are trying to make a good first impression and you're taking this seriously. Regardless of the position you're applying for, your appearance plays a significant role in that first impression long before a conversation ever begins. I've seen how coming in in casual clothes, especially at a law firm, can affect a candidate's chances. And I will take note if you come in with jeans and t-shirt and some skims on. A good mental exercise is to tell yourself that the interview starts the moment you leave the house. For all you know, your interviewer or an employee of that company could be standing right next to you when you are complaining to your barista about how they messed up your 15 customized item drink at Starbucks. So from the moment you leave the house, it's important to project that friendly, confident, professional demeanor. And punctuality is a non-negotiable. Arrive early enough so you're not worried about traffic or parking and you have time to freshen up and mentally prepare. I always say five to 10 minutes is the sweet spot. You obviously don't wanna be late, but you also don't wanna be the person waiting in the lobby 30 minutes early, forcing the interviewer to feel like they have to rush to see you sooner because they feel guilty. While you're waiting, if there are employees passing through or there's a receptionist, acknowledge them. You can be friendly. You don't have to strike up a full conversation. You know that they're working, but at the very least, don't be rude to them. If you're rude to the staff, it's going to get back to them and you are not going to get the role. If my secretary told me that the candidate was rude, I wouldn't even ask for specifics. I would just cross out their name immediately. The last thing you want is to be remembered for the wrong reasons. So now is the main event. When your interviewer calls your name, smile genuinely, make eye contact, stand up, and offer a firm handshake. Creating that strong first impression is crucial, and oftentimes your nonverbal cues speak louder than your verbal ones. So in those moments, you want to be focusing on projecting enthusiasm and confidence. With that said, also say their name. It's literally the one word that they respond to the most. And if they know your name, you better know theirs. Feel free to ask how they are doing when you first meet. Even a simple, I'm doing well, thank you, just helps break the ice and transition into the interview that much smoother. Small talk may seem trivial, but being able to get it right can have a significant impact on the interview. It's that opportunity to create chemistry and to build rapport and just to allow yourself to become a little bit more memorable. Interviews can involve a wide range of questions, but most will follow a standard format. When answering these questions, maintain eye contact. Try to be clear and concise, ideally three to four sentences. If asked to describe a situation, focus on the key facts, how you assessed the situation, your approach, and the outcome. When discussing your current role or your past experience, Provide those specific antidotes or those measurable outcomes that illustrate your impacts and contributions. The question that usually pops up is, what do you think your biggest weakness is? And I see candidates try to get creative and say things like, I'm a perfectionist or I work too hard. And they think that it's some type of cheat code that employers look at as a positive thing, but this is a red flag. Instead, choose a genuine minor area for improvement. An example of this would be something like, I can be quite self-critical, which sometimes leads me to second guess my decisions or overanalyze my work. And follow up by saying how you are working on this by accepting more constructive feedback and celebrating your wins, no matter how small they are. Just make sure that this is a manageable weakness that won't harm your overall candidacy. On the other hand, another question that often comes up is, what are three adjectives that describe yourself? Just as politicians are trained to focus on three key issues when they're campaigning, you should focus on three key points that highlight your strengths and align with what the company is looking for. These are the key attributes you want to ensure stick with the interviewer. Personally, I always tend to use curious, adaptable, and collaborative. Curious shows that you are eager to learn and grow. This tells the interviewer that you're the type of person that's always seeking out new information and that you're always looking to strive and improve. Being adaptable means that you can thrive in changing environments and that you can handle unexpected challenges with ease. Describing yourself as collaborative showcases that you work well with others and that you're able to contribute to a team. You'll also likely be asked why you want the job. Here is where you highlight your aspirations and how they align with the company's objectives. Focus on your past achievements and how you plan to contribute positively to the company. Instead of saying, if I'm hired, confidently say, I will bring innovative ideas and make a significant impact. After playing question roulette for a bit, 
interviewers will now usually give you the opportunity to ask them questions. I always like being asked, what's your favorite part of the job? Or what do you like most about working here? This shows genuine interest in the role and helps you gauge the company's work culture. This also opens the door for a friendly, informative small talk where you'll have a chance to gauge what the position and what the company is really about from someone on the inside. People also just love to talk about themselves, and this will provide an outlet for that to occur while you regroup. Another great question to ask is, have you been interviewing for this position for a while or is this moving quickly? If they say that they've been looking for a while, follow up with what do you believe the missing X factor is that prior candidates did not have? The answer to this question is so important because they are literally going to tell you exactly what they are looking for. And if you believe that you possess that X factor, you're going to follow up by confidently telling them why. When this stage is over, hopefully you feel really confident about how all this went. With that said, now is not the time to talk about personal matters or time off or scheduling or salary unless they ask. You don't need to let them know that you are planning to take a month vacation to the Bermuda Triangle. These details are all best left for later stages, like when you are reviewing the contract because they actually gave you the job. Just wrap it up, thank them again by addressing them by their name, be friendly to anyone walking in your path, get your $30 parking validated, and just leave knowing that you did the best that you possibly could. If you're like younger me, you're probably sitting in the car going back and forth wondering when you should send that follow-up email or thank you card that you think is so important that you gotta send out to remind them who you are because you think that they already forgot you existed the moment you walked out the door. That's sarcasm, obviously. I do think it can help, you should do one, but I think at this stage, if an employer likes you, sending a thank you email or a card isn't going to be the difference maker between you getting the job or not. But for the sake of professionalism and continued interest in the position, a follow-up email after 24 hours is appropriate. Your thank you just needs to be personalized and express genuine appreciation. Here's a template you could pause and read for inspiration to help guide you, but remember to customize it to reflect your unique experience and specifics of your interview. If they didn't tell you about when you would be hearing about next steps and it's already been one business week, you can follow up with another email at that time. But avoid repeatedly calling and being pushy because that is not gonna be in your favor. But none of that is going to happen because they are going to offer you the job because you did everything you could and you are so more prepared than everyone else. If you haven't already, please hit that like button and also subscribe. Also, let me know what other topics you want me to cover in this Executive Explained series that I've just created. Good luck, you got this, and I'll see you on the other side. Later. It's been 84 years.